Welcome to another edition of Focus on Alternatives, brought to you by ADISA, the Alternative and Direct Investment Securities Association. For more educational content like this, please check out the resource library at adisa.org. My name is Greg Maas, and I'm joined today by Jeff Schaefer of Common Good, co-founder and CEO. Thank you for joining us. That's great we're to be, be here. Yeah, we're going to be talking impact investing. Um, can you start off by just defining what is impact investing? Yeah, impact investing is this idea of investing for not only financial returns, but also social environmental type impacts as well. The key though is, is it's about the outcomes. So you've probably heard ESG. Uh, ESG is more about how a business functions now and today. Uh, impact is about the outcomes, both financials and non-financial metrics. Okay. Explain a little bit more about that. How do investors find impact investing and how do they evaluate impact investments? Yeah, so this is what's been so cool about watching this industry grow over the last seven years is um, you can find these much more prevalent today. But the advice I'd give people when they think about how to find or what is an impact investment, there's really four things I would think about. One, define the expectation return that you're looking at. So there's a common notion that you can't make money and do good that's concessionary. Well, actually, there's a lot of wonderful opportunities to make capital. But you want to define, is this set up to try to make money or not? The second thing is intentionality of impact. So are the, is this manager, is this company truly setting up a business to not only drive financial metrics, but also the non-financial metrics. Um, and then the other thing you want to look at is, are they reporting and measuring the different outcomes that they say they're going to? And then finally, you want to make sure it's sustainable. Um, is it has a long-term value? Are they extracting value? Or are they creating value for multiple shareholders? Or all stakeholders, actually. Okay. Uh, there's this myth out there, you know, can you make money and still do good? Can, can you just address that head on? Yeah. Well, I love that question because uh, immediately what goes in my head is, so every time you make money, are you doing something bad? Sure. Well, we all know that's not the case. Um, and so I'll just use my own example, um, actually how I got an impact investing. I started investing in affordable housing and mobile home communities. And if I had the statements in front of me, I would show, I could absolutely show you we have made real legitimate capital uh, in returns. Equally though, we've had some amazing impacts on the lives of these residents. So impact investing is a broad terminology, just like investing. So there's private equity, there's private credit, there's real assets. And so to make a blanket statement and say everything makes money would be disingenuous. But are there investments out there, a lot of them that make uh, serious capital and do good? Absolutely. Okay, we have a lot of financial advisors in the audience. Um, should they be bringing this up to clients if clients aren't bringing it up to them? And then kind of a uh, continuation of that, who, who is actually investing in impact? Yeah, I'll start with the, your first, uh, or actually the second question, who's, who's investing this way? So this is not a new trend. Uh, this has been going on uh, probably from the 70s on. Um, institutional investors, foundations, endowments have been investing this way for a number of years. The exciting part is, is it's now starting to come down into the broker-dealer and RAA world. Um, I would tell you, as somebody who came from traditional alternative investment, investing for 20 years as an executive, switched to impact, uh, we are talking to registered investment advisors, family offices all around the United States who are starting to implement this. So it is real, it is happening. Um, and ultimately, it's about connecting with your clients in a deeper way, not only on the financial side, but also on the non-financial stuff as well. So where, where are we in this trend? Is this widely adopted? Is this, are we on the, like, the starting yard line here? And should advisors use this as a way to differentiate themselves? Yeah, um, we clearly are on the early cusp of adoption for impact. ESG, on the other hand, typically is public related securities. That is much bigger and is much further along. Impact um, is going to and will continue to grow. I think what most people don't realize is, and I'm not a fan of this word, but the ecosystem around impact investing has grown tremendously. And so there are a lot of things happening that most people aren't aware of. Um, and so, yeah, I absolutely would be talking to uh, your investors and clients about this. There's many reasons. 87% um, of millennials 
want to align their values um, with their investments. 84% of women say the same thing. That's not to say men don't care, because actually it's what, it's roughly 65% do. But then you have this, this massive wealth transfer. And so there is a real reason for advisors to be having these discussions. Well, thank you for dropping those numbers because those are meaningful. And thanks for walking us through the high level of impact investing. I appreciate it, Jeff. Yeah, thank you. And thank you all for watching. For more educational content like this, please visit adisa.org. Thank you.